my precious blood I shed, that thou might ransom me and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What art thou giving for me? I spent long years for thee in weariness and woe, that an eternity of joy thou might know. I spent, I spent long years for thee, what well, as thou spent warm for me. My father's home of light, my glory circled soon. I left for every night, for wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, and thou left all for me. I suffered much for thee, more than they, thy tongue can tell of, bit, um, of bitterest agony. To rescue thee from hell, I born, I born it for thee. What art thou done, born for me? Lord, let my life be given, and every moment spent for God, for souls, for heaven, and all her style be rent. Thou givest, thou givest thyself for me. Now I give all to thee.
before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 23. Acts 23. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. But when Paul perceived that the one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. Of the hope and resurrection of the dead I am called in question. And when he had so said, there arose a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the multitude was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees' part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel hath spoken to him, let us not fight against God. And when there arose a great dissension, the chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces of them, commanded the soldiers to go down and to take him by force from among them and to bring him into the castle. And the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than forty which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, what is that thou hast to tell me? And he said, The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council, as though they would inquire somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him of them more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready, looking for a promise from thee. So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him, See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. And he called unto him two centurions, saying, Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and horsemen threescore and ten, and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night, and provide them beasts that they may set Paul on, and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. And he wrote a letter after this manner. Claudius Lysias unto the most excellent governor Felix sendeth greeting. This man was taken of the Jews and should have been killed of them. Then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, whom I perceived to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. And when it was told me how that the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Then the soldiers, as it was commanded them, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. On the morrow they left the horsemen to go with him and return to the castle, who, when they came to Caesarea and delivered the epistle to the governor, presented Paul also before him. And when the governor had read the letter, he asked of what province he was, and when he understood that he was of Cilicia, 
I will hear thee, said he, when thine accusers are also come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's judgment hall. Acts 24 And after five days Ananias the high priest descended with the elders and with a certain orator named Tertullus, who informed the governor against Paul. And when he was called forth, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Seeing that by thee we enjoy great quietness, and that very worthy deeds are done unto this nation by thy providence, we accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Notwithstanding that I be not further tedious unto thee, I pray thee that thou wouldest hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, and a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple, whom we took and would have judged according to our law. But the chief captain Lysias came upon us, and with great violence took him away out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayest take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, saying that these things were so. Then Paul, after that the governor had beckoned unto him to speak, answered, Forasmuch as I know that thou hast been of many years a judge unto this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Now after many years I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings, whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before thee, and object if they had aught against me. Or else let these same here say, if they found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. And when Felix heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might loose him. Wherefore he sent for him the oftener, and communed with him. But after two years, Portius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, willing to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. In your life, everything we go. The choir, please.
Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your wisdom. And thank you for the grace you've given us to be at the Bible study every Monday. And we thank you for all our brethren and all our invitees everywhere who are participating with us at the Bible study today. We pray, Lord, open the eyes of our mind, of our heart, so that we'll understand and comprehend and lay by the word you are bringing to us in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself for the Bible study in the life of everyone today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 I welcome every one of us to the Bible study today. It's the backbone of the believer. And we ought to give our heart, our time to the study of the word of God. And please encourage those who are not here, who should be here, that they shall come to the Bible. So make that your contact for evangelism, that you are touching other lives, you are attracting other lives, and you are bringing them at the table of the Lord where they will take everything the Lord has for them. And great will be their blessing, and the Lord will bless you too. I thought you'd say good amen. amen. We're still in the book of Daniel, and today we're coming to Daniel chapter 2, the last four verses there. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 46. It says, Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. If you have been following the Bible study series, you understand that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and that dream baffled him. That dream troubled him. It traumatized his life. But then when he woke up, he had forgotten the dream and he called his magicians, astrologers and the wise men of Babylon that they should come recover the dream. That he is a dig out the dream and bring the dream to his remembrance. And then after that, he wanted them to interpret the dream. But they told him, no king, no emperor in any empire, anywhere in the world in history has ever asked the wise man to do something like that. He was so furious. He was so unhappy because that dream he knew it had significance but he had forgotten so he said if you don't recover that dream and interpret that dream you will be killed and then your houses will become don't kill because they couldn't eventually he commanded they shall all be killed. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were part of the wise men of Babylon. And so they wanted to kill Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they got to Daniel, Daniel was calmness, and Daniel was stillness. And Daniel, with the presence of mind, said, how would you do that? Why is it so urgent? So he got to the king. He said, King, give me time. I will discover the dream and I will bring the dream back to you and interpret it unto you. Um, Nebuchadnezzar must have been surprised about the calmness and the coolness and the presence of mind and the rest of mind with which he approached him. And so he gave him time. That night, the Lord revealed the dream unto Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with the interpretation. So it was brought to to Nebuchadnezzar and he narrated his thoughts, his mind, his kind of uh, goal or what he was looking for even before he had the dream and then he revealed the dream to him and interpreted the dream to him. That's the reason why he was so surprised because he knew 
nobody on earth except anyone that had the spirit of God in him could have brought out the dream. That's why now in his surprise, that's why now in his appreciation and gratitude and also in his amazement, it says then, that what then means after that revelation of the dream after that interpretation of the dream then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and he worshipped Daniel understand he was a pagan understand he was a sinner understand he was an unbeliever understand he didn't really know the God of Israel so in his uh, pagan attitude that's what he did he worshipped Daniel and he commanded that day that is all his uh, all his counselors and all his ministers and all his cabinet that they should offer an oblation and switch orders unto him look at verse 47 in verse 47 the king answered unto daniel and said of a truth it is that your god is a god of gods and a lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal the secret verse 48 verse 48 says then the king made daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Verse 49. In verse 49, then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king that's what we are looking at today the message tonight is titled there is a god in heaven who rules on earth he is in heaven he occupies the whole of heaven and the whole of the universe and the whole of the earth and he rules on earth at that time at this time until the world will end and for all eternity there is a god in heaven who rules on earth three things we're looking at look at number one number one deep conviction and confession of god's attributes the nature of god the knowledge of god the ability of god the attributes of god deep conviction and confession of god's attributes number two declared comprehension without conversion from grievous abominations you see uh, nebuchadnezzar even though he made that conversion there was no repentance there was no praying in faith to the god of heaven and there was no change of heart and change of life because we discover what he did in chapter three here is chapter two at the end of chapter two he worshiped daniel and he said he should bring gifts and oblation unto Daniel. He even confessed there is no God anywhere that can reveal secrets like this. And yet, at the beginning of chapter 3, following after that confession, he raised up an idol. That's why we we'll say point number two, declared comprehension without conversion from grievous abominations number three now is daniel's consecration and companions with goodly advance he was advanced he was lifted up he was promoted because of what he had done in all humility in all sincerity 
in glory to God the Lord granted there will be promotion for him and the Lord granted that he will be lifted up and exalted and he requested for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego his companions and friends and they too were promoted we are looking at number one now number one is deep conviction and confession of God's attributes. We divide that to three parts. Look at number one here is the God who knows and reveals all secrets. The God, the God of heaven, the God, the God of the whole universe, the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and he knows. Why? Because he's omniscient. Why? Because he's omnipresent. Why? Because he's omnipotent. This God that we cannot compare with any entity on earth is the God who knows and reveals all secrets. Number two is the God who knows and rebukes the sinful the sinful, whether they are emperors or they are kings or they are princes or they are leaders, whatever they are, whoever they are, in any generation, God knows about everyone, about every king, about every emperor, about everyone in any empire and any, any uh, kind of dispensation. He knows and he rebukes the sinful. Number three is the God who makes known and refreshes his saints. We're coming to number one. Number one is the God who knows. And the God, what he knows, he reveals those secrets unto his people. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 and reading from verse 47. Daniel chapter 2 verse 47, the king answered unto Daniel and said, of a truth, a taste that your God he didn't say our God. He didn't have him as God. He didn't say my God. He wasn't converted. Your God. He recognized that Daniel was serving a true God, a mighty God, an omniscient God. A taste of a truth that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldest reveal this secret, look at verse 28. In verse 28, it tells us, but there is a God in heaven. There was, there is, there will be. He knows all things. He reveals all things. Right now, God, he says, I am God, I change not. And even till today, he still knows all things, all things about you. All things done in secret, all things done in the public, all things covered, all things forgotten, everything he knows. He says, there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days days thy dream and thy vision the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these he now narrated the dream as the Lord revealed unto him Matthew chapter 13 we're reading from verse 35 in Matthew 13 verse 35 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. That's Christ, that's Jesus, the very Son of God and the Savior of the world. Because he also is God. That's the reason he said all the things that were hidden, all the things that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world, I will open my mouth and utter them. In Romans chapter 16, 
reading from verse 25 Romans 16 25 now to him that is so power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery the revelation the revealing of the secrets which was kept secret since the world began in the case of Nebuchadnezzar uh, the secret was for a few days that is he dreamt a dream when he woke up in the morning he had forgotten and then he was asking them reveal the dream reveal the dream until Daniel came just for a few days but now even the things that were kept secret since the world began now God is able to give us the revelation what do you think if he's able to reveal the things that were kept secret from thousands 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 of years since the world began since we started living everything that we have done every secret thing for just 50 years 70 years 80, 100 years He knows everything If he knows and if he reveals The things that were kept secret From the beginning of the world Thousands and thousands of years All things we have done All things we have said Everything we are trying to cover up Everything we are trying to keep secret He knows all of them And when the time comes If somebody does not repent If somebody does not have The blood of the lamb washing everything away and clearing everything away the revelation was still come look at verse 26 there in verse 26 it says but now is made manifest since the world began it had been kept secret but to us have a God who knows all things and who reveals all secrets and therefore now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophet according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known made known revealed made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith in verse 27 verse 27 says to God the only wise and be glory through Jesus Christ forever and the whole church said Amen. Look at chapter 2, verse 16. In chapter 2, verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, it's a reminder that for everyone, for every individual in church, outside the church, for every individual in the kingdom and outside the kingdom for every individual you know where that secrets nobody will know this God knows and it says on the day of judgment there is a day coming when God shall judge the secrets of men the question for you is the question for me is have I gone to the Lord and have, have I said all those things I've been hiding all those secret things everything I do in secret thinking nobody will know this have I reconciled with God have you reconciled with God have you tabled everything before God so that at this time now the Lord will forgive you and the Lord will erase everything and he'll put those sins in the depths of the sea of God's forgetfulness so that when they are forgiven when they are set free and when you are reconciled with God he'll not remember them anymore but if you do not do that at this time of grace and this time of opportunity the sin will be following after you like a shadow and then when you come before the judgment throne God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. You will say, I get Jesus Christ for you. You could have been saved. You could have been born again. But you were too clever hiding your sin, hiding your evil, hiding your abomination, and hiding all those sins and secrets now. You come before the judgment throne and the day of grace is over. Today, is still, grace is still available. And all those secrets can present before the 
Lord in all sincerity and honesty and the Lord will forgive those who repent in Jesus name you gave me a good amen we're looking at number two here number two is the God who knows and rebukes the sinful don't you, aren't you happy we serve a God who is not afraid of his creatures? We serve a God who, no matter how high a person may be, like Nebuchadnezzar, there is a God in heaven that does not fear his creatures. The creature may call himself a king, an emperor, a philosopher, a great man, a man of forty, whoever, whatever, we have a God who is not afraid of his creatures and he knows and rebukes the sinful. We're coming to chapter 2 of Daniel, verse 21. And he changes the times, this is God, and, and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. God removes kings and God establishes and throws kings. Whoever they were, Nebuchadnezzar did not know that it was God that put him there and that the prophecy had been on from the time of Isaiah and the time of Jeremiah. God put him there and now you see a story later as we go on in Daniel and you'll see that God rebukes the sinful, whoever they are, and whatever time they live. Look at verse 45. In verse 45, for as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces, that's his rebuke, that's his judgment, the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold. He says, the great God has made known unto the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure we're looking at daniel chapter 4 verse 32 in daniel chapter 4 verse 32 and they shall drive thee from men that's daniel talking to nebuchadnezzar now we should put ourselves in the place of daniel daniel had this other dream again told him by Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar wanted an interpretation and Daniel knew the interpretation the interpretation is God knows all secrets of men and he rebukes men and women whoever they are because God hates sin the sin of pride the sin of idolatry and the sin of cruelty and the sin of wickedness that Nebuchadnezzar was guilty of. And now the interpretation came. He was going to be driven out from among men. Let me read that to you. In verse 32 it says, And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be thy dwelling. Daniel telling Nebuchadnezzar, not missing words, not covering his mouth, not using diplomacy, and not, uh, you know, beating about the bush, and not coloring the revelation. He told Nebuchadnezzar, they'll drive you at the, from the midst of men, and you'll be with the beast of the field, and they shall make thee, Nebuchadnezzar, to each grass as oxen, and seven times, seven periods shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. I was saying, I can put myself in the place of Daniel. Can I tell anyone I'm talking to that 
God loves righteousness and God hates sin? Can I tell the authorities of the day or will I join the other people who are always prophesying, prophesying, everything is good, everything is all right, and everything is going well. God loves you and God is going to promote you. You're killing people. God loves you. You're destroying people. God loves you. Everything you're doing, like the prophets of today, like they say, like the people who prophesy today, they see this, they see this, they see this, but they overlook all those things and they say, God is love and God is merciful and God will do this. And they want us to all join together, form an association that, you know, a God is not going to request or require from anybody, whatever they have done. Daniel said, Nebuchadnezzar, they'll drive you out from among men put yourself in the place of daniel uh, can you tell the truth to the people who are sinning can you tell the truth to your friend sacrifice who is living in sin can you tell the people the people they have the money they have the power they have the authority and they have everything and you happen to be near to them you're even a deeper life member and yes with all the deeper life and the deeper knowledge and the deeper revelation and the deeper understanding of the bible you are so close to an evil door you cannot open your mouth and say God rebukes the sinful. Well, that was Daniel. I'll be a Daniel. Say it if you mean it. Don't care you lose a friend, you lose a, you lose a financier, or you lose a business partner. But here is the truth. And like Daniel, you are caught out for the truth. And you have conviction. If you are born again, if you are sanctified, if the word of God abides in you, if you are saturated with the word of God, the what will come out when you meet anybody like Nebuchadnezzar is the word of God. God knows and rebukes the sinful. We're coming to verse 33 there. In verse 33 it says, The same hour was the sin fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat grass as oxen, exactly as Daniel prophesied to, Daniel, to Nebuchadnezzar. It happened exactly like that. I wonder why anyone here in our our church will follow the prophets what they said about three four weeks ago as we read the papers now not fulfilled and now they bring another prophecy just last week and here we are in the new week nothing fulfilled and yet people are following after them Everything they have said, they said, God said, God said, God said, and they published all that, and yet we know it is not true because we're looking at what is happening, and people are just sheepishly following, ignorantly following. It means many people who say they are born again, they don't have conviction. And they don't understand if that was a lie, that was a lie, that was a lie. Why would you be following what is false? It says exactly as Daniel said, he did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wedged with the dew of heaven till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. And then in verse 34, in verse 34 it says, and at the end of the days, that is at the period when Daniel had said that days would happen, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Somebody shout, Amen. In Job chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 19. In Job chapter 12, verse 19, he leadeth princes away spoiled. 
he makes judgment. When God sees evil, when God sees sin, when God sees wickedness, he does not turn the other face as if I didn't see that. He saw it. And he visits man. He visits every sinner with the sin they have committed and overthrows the mighty. We're looking at Psalm 9 verse 5. Thou hast rebuked the heathen. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast put out their name forever and Ever. We're coming to point number three here. Number three is the God who makes known and refreshes his saints. He refreshes his saints. He refreshes their mind. He refreshes their heart. He refreshes their knowledge. He refreshes their commitment. They're not dry. They're not weak. They're not suffocated with all the things happening around us. He refreshes them and he makes known his mind, his word, his will, his revelation unto them. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 23. Daniel chapter 2 verse 23. I thank thee and praise thee. O thou God of my fathers, is Daniel talking, who has given the wisdom, me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. And then he tells us in verse 29, in verse 29, it says, As for thee, O king, thou, thou, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed, that should, what should come to pass hereafter. And he that revealeth secrets, he that revealeth secrets, he, the God of heaven, that revealeth secrets, maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 22, reading from verse 19, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known unto, unto thee this day, even to thee. It says, so that you will know and you will trust the Lord. That's the reason I've made known to you this day. Verse, verse 20, verse 20 says, have not I written to thee excellent things in the in counsels and knowledge? You're a child of God. I've given you the Bible. You're a believer. I've given you my revelation. You and the things that are happening now that Jesus Christ spoke about that will happen, and the things that will still happen until the end of time. Where have we reaching already? It says, Have not I reaching to the excellent things in counsels and knowledge? Look at uh, the next verse there, verse 21, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. When people send to you, you're not thinking, what do I tell them? Don't uh, you know, bring up anything. Go back to the word. Everything we need to tell anyone, the solution to any problem, the answer to every question in the heart of man is given to us already. Have I not written that unto you so that those who come to you, you'll be able to tell them, not from your mind, you tell them from the word of God. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, the declared comprehension without conversion from grievous abominations. We're looking at Daniel chapter two, reading from verse 46. Daniel chapter two, verse 46. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. Verse 47. In verse 47, the king uh, answered unto Daniel and said, 
of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal this secret and what we are reading here is teaching us uh, to be patient and to be slow in affirming so-called testimonies look at look at Nebuchadnezzar when he heard the interpretation of Daniel he said of a truth it is there's no other God you would have said that's a born again man that's a converted man and people would like to take that man because of his authority and because of his position come come and tell our church and then they bring the Nebuchadnezzar and he said he's dazed he's amazed he's surprised he's amazed how Daniel could reveal this and then he comes there take over the, he takes over the pulpit and he says this God is the God of heaven some people would like to make him a immediately a pastor an assistant pastor if a person like this is made a pastor then he'll be telling everybody look at this look at this what do they do in secret are they really converted are they born again are they real children of god just because the man was amazed and was surprised and then he brings out this and then you immediately make him a worker you make him a deacon you make him an assistant pastor we're too fast we shouldn't do that look at what happened in the next chapter we're looking at chapter 3 verse 1 chapter 3 verse 1 nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. You know what he was trying to do? He was trying to improve on the revelation of God. The image that we see in chapter 2 that God revealed to him gold, silver, brass, iron, mixed with clay. He now, he was going to make an image. And what did he do? He made an image of gold, full stop. And then it says, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits is set up, which is set up in the plain of Dura and in the province of Babylon. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it tells us, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king said to gather together the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors, the, the sheriffs and all the rulers of uh, the provinces to come from all the provinces. Remember, he was uh, the emperor over the whole earth at that time. And he called them uh, that they should come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king uh, had set up. That the person gave, making confession, making comprehension at the end of chapter 2. And then he tells us in verse 15, uh, in verse 15 it says, Now, if ye be ready at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp and the sabbath and sabbatry and dulcima and all kinds of music ye fall down and worship look at that this man that made a great confession god is the god of gods the king of kings and he can reveal secrets there's no god like this but look at him now he said everybody will worship but if ye worship not ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning furry furnace look at his wickedness Look at his idolatry. After all that confession, be very slow in telling somebody you are born again. You are a child of God. I want to assure you, your name is in the book of life. Be slow. Let them show it by their conviction, by their character, by their lifestyle. Don't be a psychophant and don't praise the people that do not have any praiseworthy thing in the sight of the Lord. Now he said, 
if anyone will not bow down and worship at the image they are set up, he'll be cast into the bon uh, into a bony furry furnace. And who is that God? Look at the man. The very following day, the very following chapter, the man who had said, Daniel, I worship you and I want to worship your God. The very one who has said, there is no God like this that can reveal secret like this. Look at the man saying, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? That's how we're making this number two, declared comprehension without conversion from grievous abomination. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the vain worship of an unconverted pagan. Number two, the valueless words of an unchanged person. Number three, the visible wickedness of an unclean proclaimer. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the vain worship of an unconverted pagan. We've seen that already in Daniel chapter 2, verse 46. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Romans Chapter 1, we're reading from verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. The new God, maybe he has healed them. The new God, maybe he has delivered them. The new God, maybe he solved an unsolvable problem for them. The new God, maybe he recovered and discovered what they had forgotten. The new God, uh, God cancelled the death penalty that he had put upon the wise men. Then he knew that this is God that did this but it says when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither was thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. We can say that about Nebuchadnezzar even though he knew something about God and he confessed that he comprehended the attributes of God yet you can see that he had darkness in the heart, paganism in the heart, idol worship in the heart. But let's, um, you know, leave him for some time. Think about yourself. You know that God saves. You know that God sanctifies. You know God heals. You know God delivers. When you are sick, do you go to the herbalist? Do you go to the pagans? Do you go to the idol worshippers? You know, God is able, is able to do everything beyond what we ask or think. But do you give him that honor? Do you give him that trust? Do you give him that faith? And then we know that God wants and God desires pure worship. He doesn't want hypocrisy with worship. He doesn't want a kind of a secret dealing with worship. But you know that this who God is, is holy, is righteous, is sinless, is spotless. But as you worship, do you keep to that knowledge when you worship the Lord? Or do you just do like the pagans you say, but then your character, your lifestyle does not follow what you say you know about him? It says, when the new God, they glorified him not as God, as the all in all, as the one higher above any man, any man of position, any man of authority. Authority. Do you give allegiance to men more than you give to God? They knew him that this is God, but they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was Darkened. I look in at uh, verse 24 there. In verse 24, it tells us, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the laws of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25, in verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie. We know God is the God of truth. And when we read that truth, we should believe that truth, accept that truth, live by that truth. But when the truth 
we have read, we have known, we have believed when it contradicts our weakness, when it contradicts our darkness, when it contradicts our misbehavior. We try to change and we try to modify that truth. Are we better than the unbelievers then? Because it said they changed the truth of God into a lie and they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator anybody in there who is so afraid of man and he bends to the authority of a man who is so afraid of a woman and bends to the authority of the woman he knows this is what god wants but if i do what god wants they'll frown at me they'll be angry at me and they will they might even kind of isolate me and segregate me they might talk about me behind because of that oh god i'm sorry i know what you want i know the truth but this man i dare not offend him and if i obey you i'll offend him this woman i dare not offend her because if i obey you i will offend her because of that we we'll serve we we'll worship the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and somebody will say amen we're looking at the revelation chapter 13 revelation 13 i'm reading from verse 4 it says and they worshiped the dragon who gave which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying who is able to who is like the bees and who is able to make war with him actually many people live by the fear of pain the fear of suffering the fear of death the fear of rejection they knew that the beast the dragon was of the devil of satan but they say who is able to make war with him if we say no we're not going to receive the mark of the beast we're not going to receive the mark of the antichrist and during the great tribulation that's what will that's what will destroy people because they know that god is god and is the king of kings and the lord of lords but they see the dragon they see the beast and they see the antichrist and it says if if you don't take that mark of the antichrist of the beast this is what will happen many people just fear pain they fear discomfort they fear death they fear suffering and you say who is able to make war with him because of that they abandon the god of heaven and they take the mark of the beast and when that happens they are lost forever are you taking any mark are you joining a cult? Are you joining a society? Because in the place where you work, they say, if you don't join, no promotion in this place. Even the work of God, you can lose it. And because of the pain of rejection and the fear of what will they do, because of that, they cannot worship God. I pray God will strengthen you. And God will empower you. And you will not worship a creature more than the creator you'll worship god and worship god alone satan came to jesus and said bow down to me and i'll give you all these glories and jesus said get thee behind me satan because the word of god has said thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve i pray that conviction that courage that character the lord will give to every one of us in jesus name we're coming to number two and uh, number two we're looking at the valueless words of an unchanged person valueless words valueless words the words that people speak they quote the bible they recite the bible they say god said they said jesus said and they said this is the word of the lord but when they come to a challenging situation they cannot stand by the word they quote their words are vain their words are worthless their words are valueless because they have unchanged personalities we're looking at daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 47 daniel chapter 2 verse 47 and the king answered daniel and said 
of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of, of kings and a revealer of secret seeing. Thou couldest reveal this secret. Those words are meaningless. Those words in the sight of God. He knew his heart. Our heart will either recommend us to God or our hearts will make God to say, don't mind him, don't mind her. His words, her words are superficial. Those words don't have conviction. Those words don't have any foundation. Those words don't have any spiritual experience behind it. Look at Isaiah chapter 29, reading from verse 13. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, wherefore the Lord said, For as much as these people draw near me, me with their mouth and their heart and with their leaves. Do they honor me? That's Nebuchadnezzar and that's everyone that doesn't have real conversion, real salvation, but they just, you know, parroting the word of God and it's all superficial. And then it says, but they have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll fall into that trap. Want to choose a worker, want to choose a leader, want to choose a, a region overseer, we want to choose anyone, uh, and we give them forms and feel this. Now, he knows he's looking for something, he's asking for a position, he wants to be a pastor, he wants to be a preacher. You're asking him questions about the Bible. It's been there, it's been here for all these many years and all these many years all you are asking was salvation he writes that down what's repentance he writes that down what's restitution he writes that down and uh, what do you know about marriage one man one woman he writes all that down what do you know about the rapture second coming you which one is false the rapture or the tribulation he writes that down you see he got everything be a pastor now. It's not what we say. Why didn't you just call his wife? How is this man at home? Why didn't you ask the children? How is the dad at home? Why didn't you ask the co-workers? Not what they say, the way they live, the character they manifest. What do you know about this man? You know, if it's only by writing, if it's only by, I know this, that's head knowledge, but the heart is the heart changed is the heart totally given to the Lord and you know somebody has been under discipline and now you want to restore him you call him now don't you understand everybody who has been under disciplines wants restoration and he knows the right answer have you been praying that's suggestive uh, you already you asked about have you been praying since your uh, this yes i've been praying very much have you been reading the bible already you give him suggestion i've been reading uh, the bible did you see that this is wrong? yes yes i'm really sober i see it was wrong and yet the heart has not been touched the life has not changed. Everything uh, is still there. In fact, we have known there are some people that were disciplined for adultery, for fornication. During that discipline, uh, they continued the adultery and fornication. But they are not going to tell you because they don't, they are not making restitution. They do not love the Lord. They do not have conviction on the word of God. And then you ask them questions. They answer all the questions very well. It's not what we say. It is the way we we live and but understand if you are restored into that position if Jesus comes and you are being a secret sinner you will not go to heaven it's not about work it's not about service it's not about duty it's not about skill it's about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord and he knows our heart we shouldn't play games we should just come to the Lord and live the way we ought to live let us as Christians as believers understand the most important thing is living transparently before the Lord and 
be ready for heaven when the Lord will come. Don't fight for, you know, that person's position, that person's authority, that person's leadership. We we'll want him back, we we'll want him back. We want him back into the kingdom of God. We want him back into that holiness uh, 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 without which no man shall see the Lord. And as we see Nebuchadnezzar, well, we'll see, although he said the right thing, his heart was not right in the presence of God. It said that all that you were doing, it was by the teaching of the precepts of men. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44, and I'm reading here from verse 10. In verse 10 it says, and the Levites that are gone away far from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. They still retain the title and the name of Levites, but their hearts far away from God, their lives far away from God. Everything now is nominal. There is no real experience of conversion, of restoration, of righteousness, and of holiness. They are still called Levites, but they are gone far away from me. When Israel went astray, which went astray, away from me after their idols they have even bear they shall bear their iniquity look at verse 12 in verse 12 it tells us because they ministered unto them before their idols they kept on ministering they kept on ministering they kept on walking they kept on serving but they had their idols and caused the house of israel to fall into iniquity therefore have i have i lifted up my hand against them says the lord god and they shall bear their iniquities titus chapter one i'm reading from verse 16 titus Chapter 1, reading from verse 16, they profess that they know God. Daniel is, you know, asking Nebuchadnezzar, what do you know about God now? He's the king of kings. He's the king of all laws. He's the one that reveals secrets. Well done. That's a good answer. You believe in God? Of course I believe. I believe the God who revealed that to you. I believe in him, but no conversion, no conversion. He was still a pagan at heart. We need to understand our relationship with God is what matters. Our character in the sight of God, in the secret, is what matters. It says in Titus chapter 1, verse 16, they profess that they know God, but in works... They deny him in their character. They deny him in their behavior, in their interaction, in their fellowship with us. They deny God. Their character does not show the sanctification we believe. They get angry and they revenge. And their friends also fight for them and they revenge and they put pressure on righteous people because they're not happy with not making this person that forget character, forget conviction, forget doctrine. Just love everybody, whatever they are, whatever they do. Where is the holiness now? Where is the earnestly contending for the faith was delivered unto the saints. It says they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the visible wickedness of an unclean proclaimer. He was a great proclaimer. That is Nebuchadnezzar, a proclaimer that there is God in heaven. I believe there is heaven, the dwelling place of God. That's Nebuchadnezzar. And I believe God is there. And from there, God can reveal his mind, his secret unto men on 
earth, uh -huh. he was still though a proclaimer, an unclean proclaimer, the visible wickedness of an unclean proclaimer. We're looking at Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 15, now if ye be ready, at what time ye hear the sound of the cornage and the flute, harp, sackbut, subtree, and uh, dulcima and all kinds of music ye fall down talking to believers Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego forget God, forsake God I have set an idol here. I am the final authority. You fall down, worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, and you defy my authority, because you are trying to submit to the authority of God, I'll show you I am greater than that, your God. Who is the God that will deliver you out of my hand? And uh, you say you believe in God, and yet you are taking uh, the position of God, the authority of God. If you don't obey me, if you don't obey us, if you don't do what you want, because you are, you know, devoted to the Bible, and then there's a God in heaven who will show you. Those people are taking the place of God, and those people, they don't trust respect God. They don't honor God. They want you to exalt them. Exalt him. Exalt her above the God of your salvation. God will give you courage. And God will give you the stamina and the backbone not to exalt anybody above God in Jesus' name. Then he said, he shall be cast the same hour and into the, into the, uh, into the midst of the burning furry furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands. Thank God Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego allowed God to answer that question. They said, go ahead, do what you want to do. God, the God whom we serve, is able to deliver us. Our God is able. I said our God is able. He got angry. <laughs> Some Christians don't want unbelievers will be angry at them don't want uh, those pagans and idol worshippers to be angry at them and so they color what they say they breach what they say they modify what they say and they diplomatically uh, kind of change their conviction and their confession of the past but Nebuchadnezzar uh, got the right answer from Shadrach, Meshach and Nebuchadnezzar Bednego. And then he threw them into the fire. You know the story. Did Nebuchadnezzar's fire burn the faithful people? Tell me now. Their fire will not burn you. Their persecution will not destroy you. If they want to prove that they are higher, they are greater, they are more powerful than God, God will show them. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at Daniel's consecration and companions were goodly advanced. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 48. It says, Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Understand, it says the king, it has like Nebuchadnezzar made Daniel a high person. But you know, when it says Nebuchadnezzar conquered Judah and then brought them to captivity, not really Nebuchadnezzar, that was God. It was God using Nebuchadnezzar. And when the promotion came to Daniel, it was not Nebuchadnezzar of all people, is God that brought the promotion. Look at verse 49. Verse 49, then Daniel requested of the king 
and he says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king again. It's not, it's not a Nebuchadnezzar. It's God using the voice and the utterance and the hand and the decision of Nebuchadnezzar. Three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the notable promotion of faithful Daniel by the king. The Lord will promote you. Number two is the new position of faultless Daniel in the kingdom. Number three, the noticeable privilege of fearless disciples in his kingdom. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the, the notable promotion of faithful Daniel by the king. The point is in uh, Psalm 75, uh, Psalm 75 reading from verse 8, from book promotion comment, neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. In verse 7 it says, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. Give me a good amen. amen. The problem of people nowadays, they don't want to wait for God. And yet, God is the final authority. God is the one that dethrones one and enthrones another. The problem of people today is that if they, they say, if God is not doing that, I'll do it myself. I'll jack up myself. You're forgotten Absalom. It doesn't end well. If God doesn't do it, I'll do it. If he doesn't do it by compassion and mercy and love, I'll do it by force. It doesn't work. Think about Absalom. You see, it is God that promotes us. And if man gives you what God has not given you, you should politely reject all the promotion of man, all the promotion of Nebuchadnezzar, all the promotion of the people of this world, if God is not in it, reject it. It doesn't favor us. It doesn't help us because we get something from them. They're still worshiping their idol. And then we give allegiance to them and we give honor to them. It enslaves us. It endangers our soul. Let God himself do it. When God does it, everybody will know. Look at Joseph. God promoted him. Look at Daniel. God promoted him. And look at Paul, the apostle. God exalted him. Let your promotion come from the Lord. Whatever is coming from man, whoever they are, however beautiful, and that thing shines like gold, understand? Ask the Lord, is this God's will? Should I accept this? Is God doing this through him and through her? It says, but God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. We're looking at uh, point number two here. Number two is the new position of faultless Daniel in the kingdom. Look at Daniel chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 4. Daniel chapter 6, reading from verse 4. Where then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel, and that against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, no fault, faultless, faultless for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. We know the story about Daniel. He was faultless before the earthly king. He was faultless before the heavenly king. And as God was thinking about his promotion, the king on earth was to be used in promoting to become the first in the kingdom. But the people there around in the princes and all the principals, they said this will not happen. We know that the king is eyeing 
seen him. Now, what people do today is that they begin to cut corners. They know that, you know, the people are jealous, the people are conspiring, that, uh, you know, they should be promoted and all that. And they say, we will not allow it to happen. Looks like, you know, it's going to be favored above this, above this. And they try to cut corners. What some people do is that they try to appease all those people and they try to bench them if they're saying that he's too pure, he's too holy, he's too righteous and even his righteousness intimidates us. This man without knowing, this woman without knowing that promotion comes from God, whatever the conspiracy, what, where God wants you to be, you will still be there. And so many people will, you know, chip up that, cut up that, and be less righteous and less faithful and less faultless. And the people will say, it's become part of us. See, understand, if you cannot beat them, join them, but not Daniel. I said not Daniel, not you, not him, not her. And so they said, it's not changing. We're going to conspire. And then they, formed, they went to the king and they made a decree. Anybody who prays to God, that was his characteristic. All these 30 days, he'll be thrown to the lion's den. Daniel knew that. He knew the conspiracy. He knew what they were going to do. He kept on in the faultless, faithful life sinless and spotless they said they discovered him and they took him they put him in the lion's den and the lions could not eat him up you didn't say amen to that they brought him out of that lion's den and he was promoted again promotion does not come from them appreciation if it doesn't come from them God is the one that will protect you and promote you. He'll promote you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, it tells us, So this Daniel prospered. In spite of conspiracy, this Daniel prospered. In the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the passion. You will prosper. I said you will prosper. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? If I live righteous, then I will not get to the place I'm dreaming of. That's not right. If I make restitution, then I will not get to the place I'm dreaming of. That's not right. Don't you believe in God? If you do the will of God, if you are righteous as God wants to be righteous, if you are you're sanctified as God wants to be sanctified, if you are obedient as God wants you to be obedient, where he has a mind for you from all eternity, you will reach there in Jesus' name. Oh, we're looking at number three here, number three. We're looking at the noticeable privilege of fearless disciples in his kingdom. And we're talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego now. He tells us in Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 49, it says, Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Hold on, be very careful. When they set you up like that and give you that position, it is like now you know what I've done for you. Reciprocate. Anything I tell you to do, I tell you to worship I don't Remember, I gave you that salary. Remember, I gave you that position. Remember, I elevated you, exalted you above every one of your colleagues. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not do that. Even though they were promoted, they knew the promotion is coming from the Lord. It's not coming from the man. Do not be so grateful to man that you forget that it is God that used them to give you that position. Because tomorrow, if you are a woman, they'll be asking for fleshly 
pleasure in your body. And then you'll be saying, remember, you will not be where you are if I didn't put you there. Remember tomorrow, they'll be asking you to go and buy alcohol for them. Are you going to say, no, remember that if I did not put you there, you'll not be there. Remember, they'll tell you to come and join their secret cult. They'll say, uh, so and so, they call your pastor, they call your madam pastor, Mr. Pastor, whatever it is, now you, you know, join this. If you say no, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Are you ungrateful? I put you in this position. Let's remember that God is a God. God is a redeemer. And God is the one that has total control and dominion over us. Whatever privilege you give me, whatever thing you tell me, I am still going to be obedient unto the Lord. I'm sure you will not mind the testimony. I was raised in um, an in a school where the principal was an open, visible, aggressive, militant atheist. And he, he, even at going to university, they gave me scholarship. Everything I learned, and it gave me even some extra money to take care of myself, and they paid all my school fees up to my postgraduate. They did everything, but I became born again while I was in that school. All the good things, they gave me a house there, they gave me salary, they gave me food, they gave everything. It, they took care of all said their students. They didn't say because I was a student before, now I'm a teacher there. Then they looked down on me, they gave everything I could wish for, and yet, when it comes to taking my stand, I am a believer. I am a child of God. And if they demanded anything because they didn't recognize the authority of God on my life, I said no. The great vocabulary, the great word you have to put into your language, no. Do this, all the other teachers are doing it, no. Go this way, all the other people here, as we brought them up, they are going that way. I say, no, I'm a born again Christian. That's the conviction God wants us to have. Whatever we receive from man, whatever is we receive from anybody, we're not going to become subservient to them, submissive to them, and do evil, and worship idol, and say we don't believe in God anymore because our financier, because our whatever provider, benefactor, is the one demanding for that. He helped my education, but he will not control my soul. It will not control my destiny. Nobody will control your soul. Nobody will control your destiny. And see where we are today. If I had compromised with them, if I said yes to every compromise, yes to everything they invited me to, where would I be today? But thank God the grace to say no. The strength to say no. The power, heavenly power to say no to every Nebuchadnezzar. Whatever they have done for us in the past, the Lord will give to everyone. And God will promote you to the level you ought to be here on earth. And when it comes to time to get to heaven, you'll not be wondering, oh my, what if I had said no to Nebuchadnezzar? Oh my, what if I had said no to that woman? What if I had said no to that man? Now you regret, your life will not end in regret. Yeah. We'll serve the Lord. Whatever the price, we'll pay the price, we'll go through, we'll serve the Lord all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, God, here I am, here I am. I understand all this story now and understand the implication. Help me. I will serve the Lord till the end of my life.